Thank you, Andrea, for leading us uh, with all the, the songs this morning. And whether we knew them or not, it's good to have um, that freshness. And um, God is speaking to people all across the world. And new songs are being written all of the time. I will sing to the Lord a new song. And uh, so it's good to have new songs um, as well. And so it is Mission Sunday, and um, that wasn't planned. And even when I was preparing this message, um, I really wasn't planning on it to be like a mission message or anything like that. But um, God always knows what he's doing, even if we don't know what we're doing. And I certainly don't know uh, what I'm doing, but hopefully the word will come fresh from heaven and the Holy Spirit will speak to us and encourage us today. Uh, and so I want to talk about um, mission um, and what that means for today. Um, a couple of weeks ago, um, Mo, who's not here, yes, she is here. She is. Uh, you're normally sat over there. And I was kind of looking and you confused me. It's good to have a new seat. <laughs> and Mo shared uh, the passage from Isaiah chapter 43, which says that God is doing a new thing. Let's read that for a moment. Isaiah 43 and verses 16 to 19 because this will be our launch pad uh, for today this is what the Lord says it, it says in God's word in Isaiah he who made a way through the sea a path through the mighty waters who drew out the chariots and horses the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. And then it says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And so I want you to notice something um, in this passage as the launch of where we're going. We're not going to stay in this passage for too long, but this will get us going. Um, the first part is talking about that amazing uh, defining moment of the exodus when the people came out of Egypt and crossed the sea uh, and the uh, Egyptians were destroyed and so that first bit is talking about that and it's God made a dry land through the sea so the sea is water and that became dry that's incredible isn't it what an amazing miracle that is that God should make the sea to be dry and that was kind of a revival moment and then right in the middle and it talks about all of the people being kind of destroyed and snuffed out never to rise again and it's interesting that the next word we have then is forget we don't have many forgets in the bible do we it's normally remember 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 what god did remember what he did but this time it says forget we must take notice of that and be interested and think, oh, that's quite interesting because, God, we're used to remembering stuff, but you're telling us to forget some stuff. And maybe today in this church, maybe for you as an individual today, God is saying, I need you to forget some stuff. I need you to lay it down. I need you to lay it there so that it will never again come up. I need you to forget. And that can even be good stuff. This was the most amazing miracle that God had done in the life of the, uh, his people. And he's telling them to forget it. Wow, that's incredible. Forget the former things. Um, why is that important? Well, because sometimes the former things can stop us from entering into the new things that God is doing. And we stand right in the moment where God is doing a new thing. And if we don't take... An, and pay attention to that then we can be held by our traditions and our past and we can stay stuck uh, who wants to stay stuck I don't want to stay stuck I want to see what God is going to do today in this generation 
for our time. When I was in Bible college, I wrote a paper on the revival. And my conclusion was that there would be a neo-vival, a new revival, something that wouldn't like look like any of the revivals in the past. It would be completely unique. And that is what we're walking into today. So if you're looking back at 1904 and thinking it's going to look exactly the same as that moment, you are going to be shocked because God says, I'm doing something new. I'm doing something new. And then it says, this is what I'm doing. It says, it springs up and, and he asks, do we, do we see it? Do we perceive it? Do we see what's happening uh, in the spiritual realm? And then he says, I'm making a way in the wilderness and I'm going to provide streams in the wasteland. That's completely opposite to making dry ground through the sea. It's the completely opposite. It's actually causing a river to start to flow in the desert. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? That's a lovely picture for us to think. So, Mo, thank you for sharing that with us. Because that was the springboard for me to start thinking about what God is saying for us today. And so, we're going to jump um, into another book. And that's Ezekiel. And a very famous passage. Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel 47. We're going to read the first 12 verses. I haven't decided yet whether to read a verse and then kind of pause and think about it or read the whole thing and then come back to it. So we'll start reading and then we'll see what, what God says. So Ezekiel 47 and verse 1. Remembering this picture that God is doing a new thing in our generation and instead of causing a dry ground to appear in the sea, he wants a river to appear in the desert. And so the man brought me back to the entrance to the temple. The man brought me back to the entrance to the temple and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. And so uh, God was speaking to me by his spirit and saying, I want you to come back to the entrance. And oftentimes we think, and in the past, it's always been about how we can get people to come in to the church that the entrance would be important how do we get people in how do we get people to sit in these seats and fill them and and i feel in my spirit that god is saying that's completely the wrong way around that you need to think about it for our generation today and for the times that we live in and instead of thinking about how we can get people to come in god is saying how are we going to get out Instead of coming to the entrance and coming into the temple, the man who brought Ezekiel to this place um, showed him that the water had started to flow out of the temple. So he doesn't ever end up getting to go into the temple at this particular moment. Uh, but he's interested and intrigued by the fact that this water is beginning to flow out of the sanctuary. And it was flowing in the direction that the temple faced. It was facing east. And I feel like the Holy Spirit wants to ask us the question today, where are you facing? Where are you looking? Um, Brian spoke to us about our why. And when our why is the direction in which we are facing. Because I don't know about you, but I, I think that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. It's a mission Sunday. And it's not just a mission Sunday, but we are called to mission. 
to the mission field, to the mission around us. And so God is saying to us, I want you to take your eyes off how we can get people to come in. And I want you to work out how you can go out. From this place into the communities that surround us and bring the message of the good news of the gospel of Jesus to the people who are lost and searching and seeking. Because I want us to remember again that the news that we have is good. Hallelujah. It's good. It's the greatest news ever. And so he sees water coming out from under the threshold of the temple and it faced east. And so where are we facing? Are we turning our attention to our community? Are we actually looking and saying, how is the best way that we can get out into this community and serve and to seek and to save the lost? The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. And then he brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate facing east. And the water was trickling from the south side. And that was interesting to me. And I felt the Holy Spirit prompt me again and said, "Um, how does this begin? How does it start? Because sometimes we think we've got to go all out, all guns blazing, and that we can do everything all at once. And we can see revival come to Pontypridd. And he said, it's going to start slow and a trickle. Little by little, Andrea said it, one step at a time. Just taking that next step. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. It doesn't have to feel like this is an impossible task. But it has to feel like we're starting to turn our attention to our um, mission-hearted Jesus and to face the community and begin with a trickle and start to flow. And as the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and led me through water that was ankle deep. Just up to the ankles. I mean, that's a little bit more than a trickle, but not particularly like a river right now. Just like a brook. Just starting to flow out. All of this is happening outside. (laughs) Because he's intrigued. The water is flowing from the temple and is beginning to go out. Um, Notice he's measuring. Um, Now, in our traditions, and sometimes in Elim, we've been asked to measure how many people are here on a Sunday. How much money we collect. And, And the Holy Spirit would remind us today that sometimes we're measuring the wrong things. That we're measuring the wrong things. And we're getting discouraged by the things that we're measuring because we're measuring by old measures. We're measuring things based on uh, revivals of the past. We're measuring things uh, on, on things that are outdated and that God is no longer doing. So let's stop measuring those things and begin to measure um, how we can go out. And how many times we're going out and, and, and what we're doing out there. And how many people we're meeting outside and all of those kind of things. And the stories we're hearing and the things that are stirring in our hearts. We need to measure those things. And it's ankle deep. And that's good because we don't really want to go straight into the rushing river because then we might drown. Because God wants to teach us and uh, how to swim. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it, that uh, Alette's family and Johnny even now, he's already completed the swim. And in fact, he's on the run um, in the, the half Iron Man. Um, But their family are swimmers. And God wants to teach us how to swim in the river of his abundance and his blessing and his mission for us to flow into the communities. And how do you do that? Well, you have to dip your toes in first. You have to get used to the water. You have to get used to the fact that this is the river. You have to get used to the fact that we're not going to be walking through dry ground and the water on the side like they did in, the, um, in that exodus moment, but that we're going to have to be near the river. And so it was ankle deep. And he measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. So it's getting deeper. 
And God is saying that I, I want to do things that are, are causing you to get deeper and deeper and deeper into the community. And it starts with a trickle. And it starts with you just stepping out. And, and we, as we do that as a church, as we do that as individuals, then we'll see um, God's abundance start to happen. But it'll be little by little, ankle deep, knee deep. Measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. Now it's getting harder to walk. And now God is, is, is saying to us, oh, there's going to be some, some changes along the way. It's going to get deeper and, and harder. But as you go deeper, then more abundance will start to happen. And, and things will start to get going. And, but it takes time. And then he measured off another thousand. But now it was a river that I couldn't cross. Because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in. Hallelujah. A river that no one could cross. And he asked me, son of man, do you see this? Do you see what I'm doing? Uh, remember the passage before. Do you perceive that something new is springing up all over the place? Don't miss it, church. Don't miss it. Don't hold on to the things of the past because if you hold on to the things of the past, you'll miss the glory of what God is doing today in this generation. Hallelujah. Now, I just had this, this thought the other day, you know, when I was a, a young person, because I was at one point, you won't believe that, but I was growing up in the church and I was a young person and I said to people in the church at that time, I said, we need to um, kind of do some new stuff. And they were not happy with that. And they said, what do you know? And admittedly, I was young and kind of a bit foolish. And, and I'm not kind of saying that you can't be wise and learn things that happen. But where is this sense today that we should entrust our young people uh, to, to make the way? You know, I know Brian and Carolyn, was it youth with a mission that you used to be part of? And, and we must entrust our young people and say they can run with this. They can see new things emerge. And instead of us being afraid of that, we should entrust them and empower them. And say, you can do this. You can do this. And we trust you with this. And so, now it's a river that no one can cross, but you could swim in it. The river is now deep enough for you to swim in. And he led me back to the bank of the river. So he's come out of the river. He's learned to swim in the river. He's seeing that um, suddenly uh, this river has started from nothing, from just a, a tiny trickle. And he's gone through all of the process of going through ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep. And now he's learned to swim in this river. And then he comes out of the river and... His guide leads him to the bank of the river, to the river bank. And when he arrives at the river bank, he sees a great number of trees on each side of the river. And we're going to learn in a minute why those trees are there. And he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah where it enters the Dead Sea and when it empties into the sea the salty water there becomes fresh and swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows hallelujah Amen. and so when this river flows from this place into the community whatever is dead will come alive Amen. oh wow yeah. thank you Jesus is that your heart today that you would see our community not being dead anymore but being alive Amen. swarms of living creatures will live Wherever the river flows. 
And I feel like the Holy Spirit say to us today, you know, you're, you're, you're wanting to see life come, but you're not, and you're not seeing life come and you're getting frustrated with that. And the reason why you're not seeing life come is because you're not flowing. Because you're not going. And when you go, you see God move. Do you know, being a chaplain has been the most rewarding thing I've ever got to do. Because I get to walk where there are dead things. Where there are unwell things, unwell people. And I get to see God's grace and his mercy and his hope and his love. And when Andrea goes on mission, she gets to go to places and see things happen because she goes. And we're not seeing dead things come alive because we're not going. Because we're not focused on that mission. Because we're focused on in here and being protected and our comfort and our walls and you know we kind of want people to come in but we kind of don't because we're happy and comfortable and God says I want you to come back to the entrance and realize that I'm not asking you to get people to come in I'm asking you to go out <laughs> there will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh so where the river flows, everything will live. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Wherever the river flows, everything will live. Wherever you go with Jesus, everything will live. Amen. And so he's watching this bank. You see in the river bank because not only does the river flow and you can swim in it but wherever it goes it brings life wherever it winds it brings life that's why in the new testament um, we see that people would gather at river banks we know that people were baptized in rivers because rivers were where life was and i was thinking about this and i was thinking about what the modern day rivers are and where people go today and where people are gathering. And I was reminded of something that happened while we were in um, Port Talbot Church. And I don't think God has finished yet with what we started there. And, and maybe he's reminding me of it today to bring to you guys and say, how about this? And I began to think about where the riverbanks are and where people go. And it's the coffee shops. The coffee shops today are the riverbanks. When uh, Lydia comes to know Jesus, she already knew God, but she came to Jesus, she was gathered um, at the riverbank. They were praying at the riverbank. They were there because that's where people gathered. They gathered at the riverbank. Where do people gather today? They go to coffee shops. <laughs> And so we started this thing in Port Albert and we called it flow groups. And I was so amazed, like I was, I was thinking about this message and for ages and ages and we had a word in, in the hospital about riverbanks and I was thinking, well, God, you're saying something. And then it dropped back into my head and he said to me, remember what you did for that season in Port Albert? And we called them flow groups. And, and they kind of started flowing. They were like a trickle. <laughs> And we said to each other, we're going to get into groups and every week or every month or every couple of weeks, we're going to get together and we're going to go into the places in our community where people gather. And some of us went to McDonald's. That was where I went. You can tell that. Yeah. And lots of McDonald's. Yeah, we did. We went to McDonald's. Bethan's discreet. We'll have, a, we'll have a to talk about it later. <laughs> some people went to coffee shops. Some people went to the fish shops. Wherever in the community that people were gathering, we decided we would go. And we had this very simple thing. Um, we based it on the, the fish that, Jesus, that they caught, the 153 fish. And we said the, the one represents an hour. And so for an hour a week, we'll gather together. And we'll enjoy each other's company and we'll have coffee together. And... 
five, five minutes, we will read the Bible together in public, in the coffee shop. And sometimes we would pray, but we would make sure that it wasn't intimidating or over overpowering. And an hour, so five minutes in that hour, we would just read the Bible together. Or we would do a U version study together. And it would just be five minutes and it wouldn't be overwhelming. It would be very simple. And we wouldn't want to intimidate people, but we would want to intrigue people. And we would want people to think, oh, I wonder what's happening in the corner of this coffee shop today. Why do they look so happy? And why are they, because that's a really important thing, friends. In church, we've forgotten what it is to be happy. Yeah. And together, as people, and so for five minutes we would read, and then three represented three seconds. And at the end of our meeting, we would, we would have three seconds to discuss with each other, who are we going to bless today? And we would have something prepared, we'd have an envelope ready and we'd all have put a little bit of money in there or whatever it was that we would do and we would find someone and we would give them the envelope and we would bless them. One hour, five minutes, three seconds. And we called them flow groups. And the idea was that we would start to flow into the community. And God reminded me of that as I was preparing this message. And he said, I wonder whether that would be a good idea to do that again. So I'll leave that with you. Wherever the river flows, everything will live. And fishermen will stand along the shore, from Engedi to Englaim, and there will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. You know, the, the wonderful thing that's happening in our multicultural world is that we get to have people from all different walks of life, all different communities, all different people. The kingdom of heaven is going to be the most diverse multicultural um, place that you can ever imagine because Jesus is not limited to one people group at one time. He has come for the whole world. And there will be many different fish there. And the fishermen would be there because wherever the fish are, the fishermen will be. <laughs> Why? Because there's life there. I remember my uncle going to uh, take photographs. He's a sports photographer. And one particular um, thing that he was given at one time was that he would go and photograph fishermen. Hardly the greatest action sport in the world. And he was so frustrated. <laughs> he said it was the most boring thing he's ever done. <laughs> And the fishermen, we were walking around the lake yesterday and we saw them all around there. But wherever there are fish, there are fishermen. Wherever there is a river, there is life in all of its fullness. And, and God would remind us of that today. You've been wanting to hold on to things of the past, but God is saying, I just want you to have fullness of life. Fullness of life. The swamps and the marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. That's interesting. We don't have time to talk about that today. Um, but uh, that, that's an interesting thought. We might come back to at some point. And fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. And their leaves will not wither. And their fruit will not fail. And every month they will bear fruit. Because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. And their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. So that's the picture I want to bring to you today. Is the picture of this sanctuary becoming a place where we flow from where the river flows into the community in the most amazing way and where there is an abundance of food maybe today you know there are food banks um, happening everywhere and wherever you kind of flow to God will speak to you about where the, what the need is there's no point in us kind of 
trying to say, well, that's what the community needs. We need to go into the community and find out what they need. And we'll only find out what the community need is if we're in the middle of the community. But I know that wherever the sanctuary flows to, there will be food. And that will be twofold. Uh, the first thing will be that we will enjoy food together as friends, as fellowship. But also we would provide blessings for people that are short of food. Um, Carrie Newoff, who um, is a writer in America, has written a blog post recently, and I shared this with Carolyn. Um, and he said that at one point, people used to come into the church because the greatest thing they needed was content from the front, from somebody preaching. That's what they needed. But now you can get content anywhere. If you're not here today, you can log on to um, a website and find a message anywhere. So content is no longer premium. And he concludes the article by saying this, what people really are looking for today are connection and community. Connection and community. That's the thing that they're short of. And so they no longer come into the church because they can get content anywhere, but what they are really looking for is connection and community. It's a really, I'll share that article uh, with you guys. So food is connection. And not only is the fruit there for food, but its leaves are for healing. And we are an Elim church. And our heritage and our history is healing. It's healing. People getting supernaturally healed. Miracles. And they come together in this passage. Because wherever the river flows, there is food and there is healing. There is food and there is healing. So we're going to listen to a song about making us a river. We're going to allow the words to wash over us. And... But let's pray together. Holy Spirit, forgive us when we have been so fixed on the past that we have forgotten that you're doing something new. Lord, would you teach us how to swim? Teach us how to be a river that flows from this place into the community around us. As we let go today, would you hold on to us? Because some of us are scared, Lord. Because we don't know how to swim. Because we've never been this way before. Because water scares us. These new things, they scare us. And it's hard, Lord, letting go of the past. And everything within us wants to hold on to the past. Everything within us wants to hold on to the things that we're familiar with, we're comfortable with. And you're speaking to us about something new. And help us to have ears to hear today. And hearts to turn towards our community and say, we're not here for us, we're here for everyone. And we want your spirit, Lord, to flow into all the places where we go. And we want this church, Lord, to be a sanctuary that flows out into this community and brings the love and the grace and the forgiveness of God. And where we're um, united together with uh, food and fellowship and also we see your healing, Lord. We want to be a river. 
We want to be a river, Lord. On this Mission Sunday, we want to be a river. And we don't know how to do that. But you'll teach us how to swim in your abundance, in your life. And it starts right now, right here. Because maybe some of us have got weary. Maybe some of us even are wondering if Jesus is the source of everything. We want to pray for you today. Oh, Holy Spirit, right now, as we pray, would you come? And would you begin to refresh our hearts and our minds, Lord? Would you forgive us for those things that have been holding us back? Would you bring your delight and your love? I'm always reminded of Beth and telling me the story of how uh, she was touched by the Holy Spirit and how she just laughed in the Spirit. Oh God, Holy Spirit, breathe right now in this place, Lord. Remove all of the hostilities and the despair and the despondency, Lord, and help us to receive the joy of the Lord again that we would know how wonderful Jesus is. And Lord, we have been sucked into tradition and the past, Lord, and we've held on to the things of the church. And we don't want the church. We want Jesus. We want life in all of its fullness. We want Jesus. Would you cry out today? Jesus, we want you here in this place. We want you to fill our hearts and our minds right now with Jesus so that the joy of the Lord will be our strength and the river when we flow will be saturated with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus. That wherever we go, we bring life and it starts right now where we are. Oh, revive us, Lord. Revive us, Lord. Lord, that we would commit to each other for connection and community that we would face our community Lord we would turn our hearts away from ourselves Lord and we would begin to look in the community and we would begin to allow you to break our heart for what breaks your heart Lord I don't know what it is but there'll be something and right now the Spirit will start speaking to you about someone you've met in the community. And God said, you know how you felt? How you felt that deep compassion? How you felt that deep love? I want to, that to grow in you. I want you to, to go into that river of deep compassion. And I want you to let that take you. Because right now you're, you're, you're worried about what can I do? How can I be of help? And God said, I've, I've given you this desire for that reason, because you touch the heart of that person, whatever it is right now. So Lord, just begin to break out in this church, Lord. Every single person here, Lord. No one is exempt from this, Lord. No one is immune from this. Like break out right now, Lord, in this place, Lord, and begin to give people dreams and visions of what it could look like in this community. Hallelujah. Is there a kind of a people group right now? Is there a certain neighbor that you are just so drawn to? Are there people with mental health, mental ill health that you're drawn to? And that God would start to say, I want you to go and flow in that river. Oh, Jesus, speak to us right now. Teach us how to swim in your compassion, Lord. In your grace and your mercy and your love, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Let us flow again with gifts of healing right now. Maybe there's someone here today who, who, who has, God has spoken to them about that their hands would be healing hands. And we pray to revive that again in you, that you've been discouraged in that, but that God would awaken that again. I just want to say that we, we've started to see some miracles happening in the hospital. Oh God, that miracles would start to happen again in our communities, Lord. And when we flow into the community, we would see great things happen. And Lord, but the first thing that needs to break is the, the shackle that is in this place. The thing that has shackled us to this building of the past. Would you just break those chains off us right now, Lord? 
Oh, hallelujah. Break the chains off the people right now, Jesus. Break the chains off the people, Lord, that they would know that they're called to flow in this community. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. So let's play this song and let's respond to the Spirit today.